Hi guys and welcome back to another exciting episode and this one we're looking at another New Zealand tree. This is the Peruri Vitex lucens is its botanical name. We'll look, in a, look into that a bit later on when we try and identify how it got that name. So it's a large tree eventually getting to around about 20 meters by 20 meters. It will take a little bit of time to get to that size. It is a tree that can live a long time. This tree here is approximately 1700 years old. It's also a tree that is a essential tree to other wildlife like birds and insects. It likes it warm, so around about USDA zone 9. So it's grown mainly in the upper North Island. So let's take a quick look at how this plant has been classified. So we're going to start off at the family level. This is a fairly large group of plants. And if you look at these plants in front of you, you've got mint, rosemary and the puri at the end. They all look very different, but they all belong to the same family. So they have something in common. And so when we're looking at um, identifying plants, especially botanists, they're looking at mainly what they look at is first of all the flowers. So there's the puri flower. It looks a little bit like a kind of snapdragon. If you've ever seen a snapdragon before, the antirinum, it looks a bit like that. Now interesting enough, the flower is the sort of thing that changes the least on a plant. So it's out for the shortest time, whereas leaves are out in the environment, so they tend to be more adaptive. And here we have the rosemary, and if you look at the flower, it shares similarities. Similar, different colour, but similar kind of shape and the way the petals are organised. Now if I can get this into focus, we'll have a look at the mint, and you can see that it has similar flowers also. But not just the flowers are similar. If you look at the stems of these plants, especially the mint, you can see that it's got a square stem. And if you look at the rosemary, again, it has a square stem. So these are the things that botanists are looking for and to identify it. And there you go, another square stem there. So this belongs to the Labitae family or Laminaceae. Now I can have a quick look at a closer relative. So that gives you a little bit about the family, but now we go down to the next level, which is genus. These are even closer relatives, and we've got one here called the chest tree. This is it in flower. So these plants were identified very early on in James Cook's visits to New Zealand in 1769, and that's how botanists had to sort of go through identifying to get that name. It's quite interesting. Uh, but you can have another, we have another quick look at the fruits, uh, which are again used by the birds. Um, and obviously kids use these things as well because you can build these really fantastic looking um, tree houses um, because of the branches are spreading out it protects a lot of the undergrowth and, and it's a, obviously a place for little ferns and epiphytes to grow you can see down there there's some little um, perching plants that just sort of end up growing on the, on the branches of the tree um, the Maori also used to bury the bones uh, and they did uh, in Puri Forest, they did treat them as very sacred and the wood itself is super hard, the, uh, the Europeans would use it for um, housing piles and boat building, the very tough timber, it's not really used or felled, the trees are not felled anymore, they're more protected. And it also is home to the Peruri moth. This is a giant moth. It's about 10 to 15 centimeters wingspan. It's huge. And the caterpillars are huge too. And they bury in to the trunk of the tree and leaving holes. So it's an all round uh, plant that is very useful for other animals as well. That's a, you know, you can see the leaves. Vitex lucens. Lucens refers to the shiny leaves. Um, it's a palmate leaf so it's got five basically five fingers like a hand and it's got quite distinctive veins on the leaf
Maoris would also use the bark to, as a dye uh, for flaxes. And there's also in the bark itself, there is actually a chemical in there as a basically a germicide. And so Maoris used to use it to, for sore throats and things like that. Interesting that it's now, you know, that's, that's the sort of things that where people can identify uh, different uses for it. Uh, going back to the flowers, the flowers are pollinated by lots of birds, including tuis, and um, also I believe bees, but mainly birds. Um, they also are eaten as well by the birds. And one of the main birds that likes to eat the berries is the kiriru. The kiriru is our wood pigeon. It's quite a large bird, and they really just feed on it. And quite a beautiful bird too. And they basically will disperse, once they've eaten this, the, that seed, they will go and disperse the puri to other places further away, which is really quite cool. We're going to have a quick look now, and that's obviously that's just a seedling growing in the forest. We're going to have a quick look now at the whole range from flowers to fruit. Okay guys, we're just going to have a quick look at the development of the flower. So there you can see the flower on this side. That's the small fruit that's developed once the flowers are um, pollinated by insects. Then we have the sort of a green fruit, which then goes into a slightly orange, and then into the red fruit. Then eventually, well, that's the stage, obviously, when the birds will feed on it. Lots of carbohydrates and sugars in that. It's an all-round good feeder for the birds. And then it goes into a black, and then into sort of more like when it's sort of setting the seed, and these are the sort of hard, dried seed capsules. Okay guys, that wraps up this tree, the Peruri Vitex Lucens. It's definitely worthwhile planting. A beautiful tree, amazing tree for New Zealand.